Welcome back to another Micro Soldering Wednesday. My name is Derek and today I'm going to be going over something very basic. It's basically Micro Soldering 101 when it comes to working with IC chips. Today I'm going to be showing you how I reball an IC and this will give you the basics for basically reballing any IC whether it's something as small as a TriStar IC or something as large as a CPU. Although the larger the chip, the harder it gets, and there's a little bit more finesse that comes with the actual technique. But all in all, this should give you a good idea of how to do it so that you can tackle these repairs as well. Let's get into the video. All right, so today we're working on a Samsung S9 Plus that saw some water damage. And one of the chips that's causing the phone not to work properly, especially when it comes to charging, is the Power Management IC, also known as the Mac 777. Now this chip is something that you can buy. You can buy it reballed, you can buy it and reball it yourself, and they're really inexpensive. But being able to, as you're working on the device, simply reball it because the majority of the time even when they go through water damage they're still good you just need to remove the corrosion that was causing them to, to not work being able to just reball them there on the spot it takes a few minutes and you don't have to worry about ordering a part now sometimes from water damage the damage is too much to the point where you have to replace it and in that case you can order another one, but I always like to reball my ICs because I have specific solder that I like to use. So let's go under the microscope and I'm gonna show you kind of step by step the process that I do to get this done. Let's talk about reballing. So here we've got here I've got a Samsung S9 Plus power management. And I'm gonna reball this one. The phone saw some liquid damage, and as you can see, this kind of dirt-like section here. I've already got the motherboard cleaned up. As you can see, you've wicked the board, but the IC itself needs to be cleaned up because it was shorting out under here. But what I really want to focus on today is everything that you need to know, or in other words, any, everything that I can tell you about how to properly reball. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this chip I'm going to put it in a little clamp, that way I can properly clean it. So we'll just clamp it in here, got some flux on there, we'll turn on my soldering iron, and I'm going to be coming in with some 138 solder paste to help remove the factory solder, and to help remove any of the corrosion from below. So I'm almost up to temperature now with the solder, so I'm just going to start gently going over the IC. Now I'm, I'm barely kissing it with the soldering iron, I'm really actually trying not to like scrape at it. I'm just letting the solder kind of grab a hold of the factory solder. And now I'm going to come in with some wick. And with this wick, we'll suck up all of the solder. And it'll also help brush off any of the corrosion. You can still see that area is kind of dirty. So I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol on a Q-tip. And we're going to go over it and get rid of all of that dirt. You can see it's almost gone. And there we go. Nice and clean. All right, we'll pop the chip out of the fixture here. So here I've got a uh, Quan Li. It's a Bumblebee stencil for the S9, S9 Plus. And I'm gonna find the corresponding stencil. There it is. And I'm gonna take some solder paste. And what I'm gonna do is take a microfiber cloth, take some paste, and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna dry off the solder paste. This will help in the next step. Okay, so coming back with the solder paste that's been uh, dried out, we'll just push it down and onto the stencil there, just like that. And I'll come back in with a microfiber cloth, and we're gonna push down and wipe away the excess, just like that. And then I have a pair of tweezers that have a flat side that allow me to give, give good compression on both sides of this, because as you heat up the stencil, it will warp. And go ahead and turn on our Rework station, got it set at 360 degrees. You don't have to go that hot, but it's where I like it. And we'll slowly warm up the area, and we'll start in one corner and move towards the other, just like that. We'll wait for it to cool down, and once it's cooled down, I'm gonna take the stencil and I'm gonna flex it a little bit, and I'm gonna help push the IC through if it's sticking. 
And with a couple little pushes like this, it'll pop out. Then I'm going to add some flux. And then we'll come back in with our hot air. And I'm going to move the flux around so it evenly coats the entire IC. And you can watch it kind of heat up just like that. And that's how to reball and prep an IC. Now, just to, just to get, show you guys, I'm going to go ahead and install it. Fortunately, I have plenty of flux on there. We're going to line it up. There's this little guide in the corner here and here. It'll help us square it up. And I also going to nudge this capacitor back into place. Looks like I knocked it off in removing it. I'll add a little flux there. All right, we'll come in. So carefully come in with the heat. Again, I have it set about 360. Give it a little nudge like that. Way I know it's good to go. I'm gonna take a teeny bit of solder paste and put it on the grounding side of, of this cap to help loosen it. There we go. And now we'll let it cool down and clean it up. All right, there you go. So you can see that the process is pretty straightforward. In this case, it was taking the IC, cleaning it up by using flux, wick, and a lower melting solder to help remove that and clean the corrosion. And then after cleaning it properly, using a stencil with solder paste that I've dried out that I will not only spread perfectly into the stencil, but also wipe away any of the excess solder and flux after heating it up from one side to the other so that you get a nice flow and no, no major warpage as you go and adding the right amount of flux to the IC after so that when you go to install it, you don't have too much flux or too little flux and cause a cold joint. If there's something else when it comes to micro soldering that you'd like to see in a video, comment it down below. Hopefully you'll learn something. Thanks a ton for watching and we'll see you tomorrow for another Tips and Tricks Thursday.